started really by accident. I just read uh, in the news that in Ukraine they elected a president who apparently had very little political experience, but he was playing a role on a TV show of a president who fights corruption. So I uh, got intrigued and I thought, wow, this is quite a gamble. And uh, I started uh, digging into this literature on corruption and I realized that the problem is not so much corruption itself, but the lack of objective measures of corruption. And that became already uh, an academic research question. So uh, I thought, what, what could I do? How can we develop uh, instrumental variables that uh, uh, could be used to measure corruption when uh, there are no other better measurements? Uh, and one of the things that I read about corruption is that uh, uh, one form of corruption is to invite uh, public uh, officials to uh, lavish banquets, let's say, with uh, excessive consumption of food and uh, beverages. So I thought, okay, if somebody is going too often to those things, um, they might risk gaining weight. And uh, once you gain extra weight, uh, it might be difficult to get rid of those extra pounds. Uh, and uh, so I uh, hypothesized that maybe there is a positive correlation between obesity of politicians and the level of corruption in uh, uh, their country. And that's how the project was born. <laughs> I collected uh, frontal images, unobscured frontal images, so this is like a passport photographs uh, from internet uh, of uh, ministers of 15 post-Soviet republics, okay? It's really simple, I just did a Google search, uh, name, surname plus 2017, that's when the study was done. And uh, why I focused on 15 post-Soviet republics, uh, initially I was much more ambitious and I wanted to do it for all countries. Uh, but very uh, soon I realized that there is a practical limitation. It's easy to find uh, pictures of a prime minister or minister of foreign affairs in international media. Once you look for a picture of an uh, ordinary politician, uh, like minister of agriculture, uh, you got to go to local media that are often not in English but in local language. So uh, I picked up post-Soviet republics because I can read uh, surnames in Cyrillic and that just made the job much easier. I wouldn't be able to do it, say, in Southeast Asia. So uh, yeah, I collected those images and then what we did, I ran them through a computer vision algorithm. So this is essentially artificial neural network uh, that is uh, trained to recognize human faces on scanned photos. And uh, then uh, once it recognizes the faces, it is trained to learn how to associate a face with uh, BMI index. So uh, I had uh, a database of uh, many, many images with known body mass index. So the network was trained on those images. Once the training was over, there were a couple of millions of parameters to estimate as usual in these programs. Uh, then I showed uh, to the program the pictures of the ministers for whom uh, I didn't know the body mass index and it estimated uh, obesity of these uh, cabinet ministers. So what did I find? Uh, well, the first surprising finding was that estimated uh, body mass index of cabinet ministers is generally quite high. About one third of them are severely obese with BMI index between 35 and 40. So it's uh, really already almost a threatening medical condition. But the second uh, more important finding was that estimated uh, obesity of uh, cabinet ministers was positively correlated with the level of perceived corruption in the country according to conventional measures of uh, corruption. So there is indeed a positive correlation between the two variables. Um, now I only found uh, correlation, I cannot really say anything on causation. Is it uh, because they are ministers so uh, they uh, uh, may be uh, more corrupt when they are elected uh, to the office and uh, this is uh, what's causing this uh, severe obesity or it could be 
is that they are elected already uh, obese and uh, then maybe uh, they think they will never be elected again so they try to profit from a short period uh, when they are in power and take bribes so causality can go either way i i, I say really nothing about it uh, i just found strong correlation and funny enough, there was slight negative correlation between obesity of politician and the obesity of general population. Because one argument that I often heard was, well, maybe in some countries they have these obese politicians because the general population is very obese, so they just elect people who more or less represent how the population is. So this graph, guys, uh, really is a snapshot of uh, main results. You can see here uh, the scatter plot of corruption perception index, which is probably the most famous conventional measure of corruption published each year by Transparency International, and uh, the estimated median body mass index of cabinet ministers uh, that I did with, with this computer vision software. And you see that there is really a, a strong correlation between the two. So uh, it's uh, puzzling, but we could use this uh, for example, when conventional measures of corruption are not available. Uh, one example or one possible application might be uh, local governments when we want to measure corruption of mayors in little towns or villages and uh, on that local level we normally don't have any measures of corruption so we can try to measure the extra weight of uh, local politicians and that might give us some idea uh, what is the level of corruption there.